Dude, do you hear the 1400KS is out? It's the fastest gaming CPU ever. It's awesome. No, it's not. The 7800X3D is out. That is the fastest CPU ever. Do you know why? Because it's by AMD, and AMD is the greatest. Dude, AMD literally has to glue cash on just to make it somewhat usable for gaming. I mean, the non-X3D CPUs pull the same amount of power as Intel and lose by your last gen chips. You guys suck. You guys can't keep up. Bro, you have to overclock to even be somewhat competitive. You have to buy a $600 motherboard to even think like it's okay. At least I can do multiple things with my CPU, such as like edit a video, render, have Discord open in the background. Okay, okay, okay. That's besides the point. But like, why are we even arguing? I mean, Chamber has all the answers. He knows which one's the fastest. Whew, that AMD guy might actually know what he's talking about. I mean, let's take a look at the benchmarks and see really who is the fastest. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and the time has finally come to benchmark the 14900KS. Spent about a week tuning this CPU, just making sure that it really is the fastest it can be. Letting it be the fastest 14900KS that's out. So we are going to be comparing it not just against my old 1300K, but also the 7800X3D. I do want to preface, this is not my own 7800X3D. I do have a 7800X3D. It's over three hours away in a box. There'll be one set up this summer. We'll get a lot of content out of it, I promise. But for right now, I am going to have to use a supporter's 7800X3D, which is basically the exact same setup as mine. Huge shout out to Fragility in my Discord for benchmarking as well. It took the time out of his day to do this just to support the channel so that we can get content out for you guys. I have the best supporters on YouTube. It's pretty simple. I mean, name another community where someone's going to take hours out of their weekend just to benchmark something for a YouTube video that they're not even going to make. But before we get into the benchmarks or anything, let's just talk about the experience of overclocking a 1400KS. It says special edition on it, so it's a special CPU. First of all, this is the second 1400KS. Made a video on it. My first one came in dead, so that was fun. But then I plugged it in. This one worked. Latest BIOS, everything. Testing it, and... The RAM was staying about where my old CPU was, which kind of made me a little like worried. I was like, oh, maybe I didn't get a good memory controller. Maybe my motherboard isn't that good. Well, do you want to know what the issue was? You got to have the world's fastest RAM for the world's fastest CPU. That's right. This is Patriot Viper 8200. 8200 mega transfer CL38 XMP kit of RAM that I had to throw in the PC. So to overclock at 1400KS, you need overclocking motherboard, overclocking RAM, overclocking thermal paste, all affiliate link down below. First is a 7800X3D, you need a $450 bundle for Micro Center. Before we even think about that, just think about economically wise, which one might be the better option for you. Now, if you're a competitive gamer though, like my audience kind of is, or we take our gaming very seriously, you need all that FPS. So what games did we test? Most important, why did we test these games and what did we test? I decided to test a multitude of games. So we only use games, technically one benchmark, it's one synthetic. So we did Time Spy Extreme CPU score. This is a pretty simple one. Does your CPU have more clock speed, more cores? It's gonna win. We then did Shadow of the Tomb Raider 720p lowest preset. This is another synthetic. It is just basically saying, okay, which one kind of has the fastest single core score? It's very X3D biased because it doesn't have to touch the RAM. Some other games we did was Cyberpunk 2077. This was, I know typically this is very much a GPU bound game, but we just, I decided to do it through 1080p ultra, no ray tracing, no upscaling, no fake frames, real frames generated by the CPU and the GPU. We did Far Cry 6 as well. This is my first time ever testing this game. I did like this benchmark a lot. If your CPU is unstable, or if you have the AM dip, you're gonna notice it. This game will really hit those cache, really hit the memory, really show if you're unstable or if there's any issues in the architecture. Rainbow Six Siege. This is a competitive FPS game that's growing. I've been using it for years to benchmark, but it's finally growing. And like this game 
gets a lot of FPS. So if there are dips, you're going to notice it in the benchmark itself. And then lastly, because we're nerds, we had to do Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 because that's the only game that really counts in this whole benchmark. All of these were 1080p low besides Shadow of the Tomb Raider just because we want that competitive FPS and Cyberpunk Ultra. No ray tracing though. Chamber, you explained what the benchmarks are, but you didn't explain what the PCs are. So, starting off, the 7800X3D is running PBO and Curve Optimizer to be undervolted. It is running 6400CL32 memory at 2133FCLK, basically the highest you can go. Yes, you can go 1 to 2 and get like 7800 megahertz 8000 but most boards are not able to do that and you do kind of have more issues and it really fixes performance is basically the same gpu as well is a rtx 4090 for the 1300k it is running what my 1300k has always run 5.7 on the p cores 4.4 on the e cores 4.8 on the ring with 7800 megahertz cl36 memory and then the 1400KS. The clock speed's stuck. The CPU is stuck. 5.9 all core, 4.5 on the E cores, and about 4.5 on the ring. So I'm gaining 200 megahertz in the P cores, 100 megahertz on the E cores, and I'm losing 200 megahertz on the ring. There's that. Just think about that. The CPU is just, it's so fast already, and it just, these things need an undervolt. They get a little hot. The memory is 8000 CL36, so I gained 200 megahertz with slightly tighter timings too. It's fast. My Intel CPUs do have hyper-threading disabled. It just performs better in all games. If you need the extra cores, okay, maybe you'll lose 5-ish percent, but I want that extra 5% and the lower temperatures. X3D does have hyper-threading on. Pure 8 cores is not enough for gamers in the year 2024. I said it, that's right. We need high-end, we need higher core count CPUs for gamers. Now, as you guys may or may not know, I have to buy all of my CPUs for myself. I'm not big enough to have Intel or AMD's attention. I have to buy all these CPUs myself. So if you would like to support me, the links are down below. You can join my Discord, become a supporter, get some awesome, awesome bonuses because of that. You and also, if you want to get FPS like you're about to see in these benchmarks, you can purchase my FPS optimization service in the link down below. Best $150 that you can spend on your PC. And also, thank you so much to all of my supporters who have stick, stuck around every month in the Discord whenever their subscription rerolls and I see 12 months, 14 months. I think we have some almost coming close to like two years. You guys really do make it so that I can afford and make awesome content for you guys. I really enjoy doing this stuff. These benchmarking, these new CPUs is still always one of my favorite things. So glad I continue to do it. Let's get right into the benchmarks though. Starting off here with a win for the 14900KS. So, Time Spy Extreme. This is a bet this is a synthetic, this is XOC stuff. This is why you'll see at the top of the scores you'll see something like a Threadripper winning all these because whatever has more cores is going to win. This 7800X3D has 8 cores and 16 threads. It's still losing to a 24 core, 24 thread. It makes sense. So you're getting about double the score on the 1400KS. They both have 8 P cores, but obviously the 16 E cores are really coming in handy, really kind of pulling forwards. But you can see where that extra 200 megahertz in the P cores and the extra 100 megahertz in the E cores really does come in handy here. I mean, like you're getting that extra performance boost. But how does this really show up in games? 720p low. And as we can see, this is a win for X3D pretty handily. This game is very X3D biased though. You'll notice that some games do win as long as they can fit in that cache. This game happens too. It's still an insane amount of FPS and it's a single player game. You're not playing it at 720p unless you have something like a Steam Deck. The 1400K and the 1300K are tied though, which does show, okay, maybe that clock speed doesn't matter. Maybe that cache does. Maybe that RAM speed does a little bit more. I forgot to mention this game, but this is Rift Breaker. This is just 1080p default full screen. And this is a win for the 1400KS. This game honestly just isn't very x3d good like amd just always is lost in this benchmark as you can tell by the lows here so 
this is just a pretty simple win for the 1400ks and the 3900k obviously though that extra clock speed from the 1400ks really is helping it out not just in the averages but in the lows itself making it a more smooth experience in this game for all three people who play it cyberpunk is another one of those that was I'd never benchmarked it this way before I ran the benchmark but I'd never done this preset before and this one was really interesting so max fps was all about the same with the 1400ks and 700x3 being pretty much within margin of error that average fps is a win for the for, for the 700x3d but those minimums dude which is where you're really going to feel whenever you feel something like stutter that's what you don't want to feel and the 700x3d surprisingly wins here in the minimums so Good job, AMD, on this. Far Cry 6 tells a completely different story, though, which does show that some engines do prefer AMD, some prefer Intel, some favor that X3D. I mean, look, so the at max FPS between the 1300K and the 700X3D are the exact same, with the average FPS being pretty close. But those minimums, look, you're losing 30 FPS in the minimums on the X3D compared to the 1300K. 1400 chaos though does just kind of blow them all out of the water that extra clock speed really does help here that extra 200 megahertz on the memory that 8000 the magic number as a lot of people tend to call it win for the 1400 chaos another ubisoft game here with a rainbow six siege ubisoft makes far cry 6 so think about these kind of showing the same results almost that max fps is insanely high on 7800 x3d it has those really high highs but man does it have those low lows you're losing 200 fps in the minimums on the x3d i mean like i could understand if maybe you drop to like even 750 in the minimums but going from 824 to 610 is insanely bad it really does hurt I mean the averages are fairly close but like when you know that you can have a dip that hard i don't know if i trust this cpu in a competitive match playing rainbow six siege this is when intel really does shine i mean think about it you can get a 1300k for fairly cheap at this point in the last game call of duty modern warfare 3 this was done in a private match on terminal we were just running around in the circle circle running three loops and that average FPS is fairly close. I mean, 700 X3D is down by 10, but like it's 550 plus FPS. It's insanely good. The 1% lows are actually a little bit higher on the 700 X3D. So like, look, AMD is not known for their lows. So whenever they can win, I'm going to give them some credit. Okay, they're winning in the 1% lows, but then they just completely tank in the 0.1%, which make it not even matter anymore. I mean, like... Okay, cool, you're winning by 10 FPS in the lows on the 1%, but then you're losing by 100 in the 0.1%. I mean, you're going to feel that. That's why people, when they're moving their mouse around and saying it's hard to aim, it's stuttery. This is what they're experiencing in games like Warzone, Modern Warfare 3. This is when X3D, and this is what people don't talk about. And that's my issue with AMD. It's insanely good. I really respect AMD. I really like what they've done here with the X3D. The 700X3D is like my go-to recommendation. But it has these high highs like where it performs so well in a game. And it looks so good in the corner of the FPS. But then when you really look into it and you're like, man, like it feels stuttery. Like I have an 8000 hertz mouse. I have a WL mouse Beast X Mini, which supports 8K wireless. And you notice that stutter. Makes you kind of question your purchase. Obviously, these are 1080p. If you're running like a 1440p monitor, which is what I daily, the difference is going to slim a little bit because you're going to become more GPU bound machines. Matters more what your GPU is doing, but still that CPU is going to be important in those competitive games. You need to be feeding information as soon as possible. But is it worth spending double for one of these? I mean, no, you do not have to get the 1400KS. You can get a 1300K for sure. 1300k is going to perform amazingly well something or a 1400k save yourself 250 get yourself a ford in board for 200 dollars, and then get yourself a good kit of 7200 megahertz ram link that down below and there you go for just a couple hundred dollars more you're beating amd now does that matter to you it all depends on who you're saying i'm saying if you're a competitive gamer someone who wants that advantage doesn't want to have to deal with any issues Go Intel. Okay, you might not have the highest average FPS, but those lows are going to win. 
you're someone who's trying to get this on a budget, maybe if you go AMD, you can get a higher end GPU. Maybe then I'm going to say go with the X3D. All just depends on your use case. Like this summer, I'll probably spend a couple of months on AMD just to see how I really like it. What really is my experience on it? But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, hit that like button down below. Subscribe as well as purchase any of the products I did link down below. The 1400K I'm keeping. People thought I was going to return it. Nope. Keeping this thing. I think this thing's goaded. I think it's really good. I just like having the highest end of every single product here. The high end PC here does everything I need. Let me know down below what your thoughts are. Do you like AMD? Do you like Intel? Are you a fanboy? Don't be a fanboy. <laughs> See you guys later. Peace.